Welcome, Night Owls. I'm so excited to be here with you at the start of our love month, um, February. So, so super excited that you're here showing us some love tonight and thank you for being here. Um, speaking of love, our book club book of the month this month is The Language of Cherries. It is an amazing book. Hopefully you can see this. Not only does it have a drool worthy cover, but it is the perfect February book. It's got romance. It's got amazing scenery that makes you want to jump on a plane and run away from your actual life and so much more. So if you um, grab this, you want to participate in our book club book of the month, it's 99 cents until the end of next week. So it's a steal. It's a great way to spend your February love month, but it's also such a great steal for the price. So grab yours and um, hope you enjoy it. It's wonderful and I love it so, so much. So as you can see my screen, welcome to our literary romantic trivia night. Uh, we thought it would be fun because we love books so much and February is such a great month for reading that we would pair the two together and we're excited to have you here tonight. So we're going to get started. We're going to do a little something different with our trivia um, to give people more opportunity to participate. Um, so if there's a little kink in it, I'm really sorry. Um, just bear with us and hopefully we can figure it out uh, because we're all trying something new tonight. So we're going to do three rounds and um, with the three round questions, if you answer any of those questions right, then your name gets put into a hat and you get um, put in for the drawing. And when we do that, I'll spin the wheel to see what you what you've won and Emma will um, be the one pulling the name out of the hat. So a little bit different, um, but hopefully still lots of fun tonight. Uh, so thanks again for being here. So we're going to get started and um, Emma's in the comments. Please participate, say your favorite books, whatever. We're just excited that you're here and um, hope you'll participate in our game. So we're going to get started. Here is round one. In what city do Edward and Bella fall in love? Back to the twilight days. I will say that I was a bit obsessed with, with them in the day. Um, so put in the comments what city that you think, or if you know that uh, Edward and Bella fall in love. All right, let's see who got it right. I mean, can we remember back to the twilight days? It's okay to admit that you were in love with it. <laughs> I mean, the movies were terrible. I'm sorry, but they were terrible, but the books were wonderful. All right. It's kind of light down there, but it's Forks, Washington. Hopefully you got that one right. Forks, Washington. I've heard it's a beautiful place and they had a super funny um, COVID, COVID thing for the reservation saying, um, please, we'd welcome you back a different time, except for if you're a colon, you're never welcome here, which I thought was funny and clever. All right, next question. What feature of Elizabeth Bennett, um, Bennett's, what, sorry, I'm so sorry. What feature of Elizabeth Bennett does Mr. Darcy first compliment? If you can remember which, um, which feature I'm sure of hers that that she first he first compliments. And that was reminding me to give you some time to, to think, sorry. These are super fun books. And I love that they take you on a Regency adventure. And that, I mean, I don't know about you, but I find Darcy's attractive in the end to everyone, but I think a lot of people find him annoying at the beginning because he he's just one of those shy guys that doesn't know how to talk to girls. So give the man a break. All right, let's see. Her fine eyes. I think she had beautiful eyes too. And I think that's a great compliment. I think that's a great way to compliment somebody instead of saying, man, your lips look hot. Fine eyes, I like it. All right, in To All the Boys I've Loved Before, what did Laura Jean's sister send to whom? This one's a fun one too. 
in our um, our favorite books of 2020, I talked about one that was similar to this. It's um, Regency time period. Also, same concept of sending letters of how you truly felt about people and them actually being sent, unfortunately. And I can say that in my real life, I've done that before too. So, I mean, boys, huh? <laughs> All right, Laura Jean. What did her sister send to whom? Oh my gosh, I totally gave that away. <laughs> Sorry. Letters to the boys she's had a crush on. I'm really winning at this trivia, guys. I'm sorry. Letters to the boys that she's had a crush on. That would be mortifying. And I'm sorry I gave the answer. All right. In which city do Gus and Hazel share their romantic overseas adventure? This one. Um, I don't know if I'm familiar a lot with this one, but an overseas romantic adventure sounds always appealing. And that's why I love the language of Cherry so much is that it's an overseas romantic adventure that you do not forget. So definitely check that one out for a good Valentine's read, curl up with your favorite book or this book and your favorite drink and some chocolates. That is a date to me. All right, in which city do Gus and Hazel share their romantic overseas adventure? Amsterdam. Sounds like a fun romantic place to go. All right, the next question. Hopefully you guys got that one right. Awesome to you if you did. All right, despite his love for Jane Eyre, why can't Mr. Ro Rochester marry her? It's a good question. Why can't he marry her? I don't know if nowadays our romantic stories would be as good or uh, as, I don't know, as good on paper as we think that they are, but I think that there are some great romantic stories out there. And if you want to share them with us in the comments, please do. How you met your significant other. Um, and or your favorite story or your favorite um romantic date maybe a disaster valentine's day that one's fun too so um yeah how um how did you meet your significant other favorite valentine's date share in the comments with us and and answer the question Oh, good. Candace, Olivia, and Allison all got that one. Great job. This one, he has a wife locked in the attic. <laughs> Why do we like this guy? That is pretty creepy. I'm glad that. Oh, and Darby too. Good job, Darby. Good job, you four. Hopefully you guys don't have a love match locked in the attic too. I agree with this though, that it's kind of creepy and though the story is romantic and fun in a way i do think that it's kind of a messed up ending for her all right next question who says in vain have i struggled it will not do my feelings will not be repressed you must allow me to tell you how inherently i admire and love you who says that ardently who said that word ardently Who says this one? Okay. I wish we talked like this still in vain. I have struggled. <laughs> we make for some good conversation nowadays. And a lot of teenagers would have no clue what was what we were trying to say. All right, I'm trying to give you enough time to answer the question. There's a little bit of lag between Zoom and Facebook, so I don't want to skip past it too quickly. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry if it gets weird.
You guys are doing great. Great feedback from, from the comments. So good job. And I know how much Candace loves her trivia. So glad she's here tonight, leading the way on, on that. Oh, good. Okay. So from Pride and Prejudice. And this is Mr. Darcy to Elizabeth. Good job, Candace. Seriously, I feel like you know trivia about everything, books and all the things. She was telling me that she misses her um, trivia nights out at, at the bar so or the pub. And so I'm glad that she's here to help us tonight. All right. And the winner of round of this round is round one. Emma's gonna tell me. But while she gets that to here. I'm gonna hold up our prize wheel and tell you what we have tonight. And we draw from everyone that participated in that round. So it's not just whoever got the answer first, it's not whoever answered the most, it's we draw from everyone who answered correctly in that round. So I'm gonna tell you really quick why I wait for Emma to pull the hat, um, that we have a $5 Starbucks gift card, an Owl Hollow Press ebook of your choosing, a $10 Amazon gift card, an Owl Hollow paperback of your choosing, which you could choose Language of Cherries if you wanted and keep your 99 cents. Um, and then, yeah, so those, oh, and then book bling. We have some really fun book bling. So hopefully you win. And the winner is Allison. Good job, Allison. So I'm gonna spin for you and tell you what you got. I'm gonna spin it good. And you won a $10 Amazon gift card. Congratulations, Allison, and thank you for playing. <laughs> but keep playing, because that would be nice too. All right, moving on to round two. I'm excited to see what, what you guys come up with. Okay, so desperately in love, Romeo dies from blank and Juliet dies from blank. This one is, a great classic. Hopefully everybody knows this because you'd miss a lot of references from movies, from, from life in general, I feel like if you don't know this one, but if you don't, we're glad you're here. Stick around and let us know um, what you think and um, get that one right, hopefully. So desperately in love, Romeo dies from blank and Juliet dies from blank. <laughs> Darby says, I like the clackety clack sound of the wheel. Spin it again. I'll spin it again, Darby, just for you. Makes you feel like you're on a, a good game show. They always have the good clackety clack. Oh, Olivia and Darby tied on that one. Good job, guys. That one is a good one. Okay, let's see the answer. Poison. So Romeo dies from poison and Juliet dies from a dagger. Good job. Like I said, I hope, hope everyone gets that one. All right. The next question. Harry finally kisses Ginny after which big event? Come on, Harry Potter buffs. Where are you? This is a good one. I don't think a lot of people think of like, when they think of a good romance to read, um, they think of Harry Potter. Cause I think most people think it more of a younger adult middle grade book, but there's romance everywhere. Everyone loves love. Hopefully everyone loves love. I love love. So that's why I love February. Good month to celebrate love. Good month to read a good book about love. Harry and Ginny. Who knows this one? Hope. Darby. Darby, you're all over the place tonight. You're going to have Candace run for her money. Okay. Darby got this one. Gryffindor wins the Quidditch Cup. What a great place to kiss. I'll get it. Okay, next one. 
what items does Park give Eleanor that are simple but hold a lot of meaning for her? <laughs> Allison, Olivia, and Candace all said, I should know this one. No, like I said, nobody thinks about Harry Potter when they think about a good love story. So maybe if you've already read The Language of Cherries, curl up with some chocolates, your favorite drink, and read Harry Potter for the for the epic love scenes on that one. Because you've got a couple, lots of crushes, and it's a good reminiscent of, you know, the good old days in junior high when I, I had multiple crushes. I don't know if anyone else did, and you wish so badly that they would like you back, but maybe they did. They didn't for me, but I'm okay with that. All right. Who knows? What items does Park give Eleanor that are simple but hold a lot of meaning to her? This is a good one, too. I can't wait to see who wins it. They're just neck and neck. Everybody's doing so great. Okay. All right. I'm going to give just a couple more seconds for someone to answer it. This is from Eleanor and Park. All right. Batteries. Oh, I love that. It is so simple, but it is, that's so, so cute where it gives, um, her them on the bus because she doesn't have anything to listen to for the music. So I love that. And nobody got that one. I, I can honestly confess. I haven't read this one yet either. So, um, put it on my list to do so. <laughs> oh, Emma says Candace was close with cassette tapes. That's what she was trying to listen to and needed the batteries for. So good job, Candace. All right. The next one. Who does Gatsby love and try to win over with his wealth? Good old great Gatsby. It's kind of a sad story, really. I mean, it's good love, but it's lots of tragic love. I guess that makes for good reading, too. So good old Gatsby. <coughs> Did anyone meet their significant other or have a fun Valentine's date that included like a Gatsby time period theme? I see a lot of those on Pinterest and Facebook friends and stuff. So it'd be cool to see if there's a Valentine's Gatsby party. So if you have been to one, tell us in the comments so that I can be jealous. All right, who does Gatsby love and try to win over with his wealth? <laughs> Darby says some women, some woman. <laughs> I agree, Darby. Sometimes it's confusing. Candace got it first, but Olivia also got it. Good job. So Daisy, good job, both of you. Pulling from the, the far back mind, the good old Gatsby. Okay, the next question. When does Princess Buttercup realize that the Dread Pirate Roberts is really her true love, Wesley? When does Princess Buttercup realize that? And this is one of those things that hopefully I don't give it away in this, I'm trying to think of a way to say it without, that when you truly love someone or you've been around someone for a long time, you just, you know, the mannerisms, the the things that they do, the things that um, that endear you to them are stuff that stick out to you the most. So I like this this reference a lot. Plus, it has hands down the most classic quotes of all. So if you haven't watched this in a while, I highly suggest that you watch it again. Allison says, this is motivating me to reread some good stuff. I agree. This is a good, good one. 
And once I didn't even think about, I think that a lot of, I don't know, for me anyway, you think of some classic romance ones, but um, pulling them out from everywhere. It's really great. Yay, Darby, Allison, and Olivia got it. Great job. Okay, the answer is when he yells, as you wish, while rolling down um, the hill that she pushes him because she's mad at him and he rolls down the hill and yells that his signature as you wish. And I love that. And like I said, when you have been around someone or something that endears you to them, it's something you never forget. So I love that. Ooh, Candace says she met her love at a midterm Shakespeare study cram. I love that. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad that you shared your love story. Please do. Cause I love hearing about these. Um, that's awesome. And Shakespeare of all places. Good job, Candace. Good job, Candace's hubby. All right, the next one. Where is the heart in the telltale heart? Where is the heart? Oh, Katrina got Princess Bride too. Katarina, Katrina. Yes, great job. Thank you. I'm so glad so many people are here participating. Oh, Cat Arena, I am very sorry. Where is the heart in the telltale heart? It's kind of a tongue twister. It says heart a lot. I've been saying love a lot. So hearts, love. February is all about all the love. Yay, Olivia and Candace both got that one. Great job. You guys are so quick. I'm so impressed. The heart is beneath the floorboards. Pretty sure that enough movies and books have put things beneath the floorboards that that is not a safe place to hide your valuables anymore. Darby says in the, <laughs> in the wine glass, someone needs to write that story. <laughs> I agree. I agree. All right. So that's the end of round two. And while Emma tallies that up, I'll go over again what, you, what you're wanting to win over here. Uh, a $5 Starbucks gift card, an Owl Hollow Press ebook of your choosing, a $10 Amazon gift card, an Owl Hollow Press paperback of your choosing, and um, book bling. So Emma's still pulling those, but Darby says, my love story is so, is so mundane. We met in a Sunday school class for young adults. I don't think that's mundane. That's, I love that. It's very similar to how I met my husband. My husband and I um, were coordinating uh, sports teams um, together. And we, he, he wasn't actually supposed to be there. He was filling in for someone. And then when my co-partner left, I immediately asked that, that my husband get that part and we we did stuff for for our church that way and it was really great so love stories happen all over and i love it random places good places all right the winner the round winner is candace good job okay darby your favorite sounds coming up and candace wins an owl hollow ebook of your choosing so be thinking about which one you'd like. That was a good one. Okay, great job, Candace. Congratulations on winning that. All right, round three. This is our last round. So if you haven't piped in yet, hopefully you will. Please keep sharing your love stories because I love it. And we're going to go ahead. Here's the first question. Candace falls in love with this son of a baker. Sounds a good one. Good old Katniss Everdeen from the Hunger Games series. If you're not quite sure which what question this is from, that one's a good one. Katniss. Good old love triangle too. I feel like a really good love triangle is where you want both to win and you just can't choose and then something happens where you hate one of them and they're like yes i got it but 
good successful love triangles make you a little angry because you want both to win at the beginning. So that's why you keep reading. All right. <laughs> Darby says something like Petri dish. <laughs> You're so close. So, so close, Darby. <laughs> Okay, it says Olivia, Candace, and Allison all got that one. Great job. He is a attractive man to read. PETA, PETA Malark from The Hunger Games. All right, after her crush on Aragorn, um, Erwin finds true love for this man. I think I, I, think I said her name wrong. Erwin? Er it's so close. I feel like the names of like the two loves for Aragorn are really close and I'm sorry that I slaughtered that. I'm a true Lord of the Rings fan. I'm sorry. Sorry, Darby. Don't hate me. Here's a funny <laughs> story about her. She sings a song in the Lord of the Rings and um, at the funeral of her cousin. And um, my brother wants me to sing that at his funeral. So I've been practicing for many years, even though he's my younger brother. Darby remains our Lord of the Rings queen. I love it. Okay. It's Faramir. Yes. That was a good one. All right. <clears throat> oh, Katerina got that one too. Great job. You guys are so quick on it to know your books so well. Okay, in this unconventional love story, a librarian with a rare genetic disorder involuntarily travels through time, complicating his relationship with the love of his life. Time travel, sounds good. You guys know this one? Librarian. Good clues, genetic disorder. You guys know this one? Did any of you guys meet your spouse in a hospital? That's cool. Like, maybe think you were, I don't know, dying or needed a blood draw or something. That's love right there. I like that. I want to hear some more love stories too. All right. Okay. Says Darby says Doctor Who. Candace has no idea. We're still waiting to see. I this is one I'm struggling with too. Olivia says cross talk. So clearly we need to find that one too. <laughs> I like it. All right. It is the time traveler's wife. That one's one I need to reread again. So there's a lot of good books about time travel and romantic stories. So I like that a lot. Great job. Allison got it. Yes. Good job, Allison. Oh, sorry. I said the answer too soon, but she did get it before I said it. So great job, Allison. All right. Ooh, this one's exciting. Who is the first Bridgerton to get married? If you guys haven't watched Bridgerton yet, it's a good one. Hannah talked about that one uh, in her query live a couple weeks ago about how it made such a creative spin on on a regency time that people often think oh well there's so many regency books just one little storyline change and whole new fresh look on it so if you haven't seen that one you should go back and watch hannah's query live because that one was really good candace says daphne she is correct out of eight siblings daphne is the first one to get married so hopefully this like piqued your curiosity about the show. It's really, really good. You should watch it and read it. 
it's on Netflix right now if you need a passive watch and then go read it. Candace says she read Time Traveler's Wife, but she must have forgotten he was a librarian. Yes, I've forgotten that too. All right, in Anne and Gilbert's first meeting, she does what over his head? I think this is probably one of my favorites. Oh, Katarina says, I've only listened to the Stellar soundtrack. Oh, yeah, it does have a good soundtrack. Anne and Gilbert. This is another one I need to go back and read. Anne and Gilbert's first meeting. Yay, Allison and Darby got it. Great job, you guys. Breaks her school slate over his head. <laughs> I call that sassy. I love it. Okay, which March sister does Laurie marry? These are some great, great classics. And a, as my son likes to call them, twist ending for sure. Because you don't see that one coming. These are great romantic movies happening all over the place and books. Books are way better always, but sometimes it's easier, especially after you've had a long day to just sit and watch these things. Not as good as the book always, but a good, good way to clear the mind. Oh, I'm so jealous. Katarina says she made her parents drive her to Canada to see Anne's house. I love that. I want to go see Anne's house. <laughs> Allison said the youngest little floozy. <laughs> good, good terminology for that one. <laughs> I don't know if that counts as the winner, but it's definitely, definitely an accurate description of her. Darby, but both Allison and Amy, close seconds. Great job. You guys are so good at this trivia. Amy, Amy March, got to marry, well, the Lari guy. Okay, and that is the last of our rounds. So the winner for this one, as Emma calculates it, um, as she pulls it out of the hat, just a reminder for anyone just barely hopping on. If you participated and got it right at all during that round, then your name goes into a hat and we draw your name out. Um, so as more chances to win instead of always being the first one. So we're just excited that you're participating and being here with us tonight and showing us all the love and, and just love, love. I know I've said that like four times now. I really just love, love. All right. All right, the winner for this round is Darby, Lord of the Ring girl. Okay, and this sound is for you, Miss Darby. I'm gonna spin it really good so that it will stay for a while. And Darby wins a $10 Amazon gift card. You can go buy some horsey gummies or something with it. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for participating tonight. That was so fun. And hopefully it gave you some great ideas of things that you want to read, curl up and read um, for this Valentine's holiday or um, other things that get you excited about it. Um, <laughs> Darby says, let's hear that clickly clack magic. Did it just for you and you won an Amazon gift card with that clickly clack magic. All right, so we hope you feel the love in the air and remember some amazing romantic bookish moments. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Hope that you have a great week and we'll see you next week. Subscribe to our channel so you'll never miss an upload or join us live every Thursday for author interviews, book clubs, writing advice, and more on Facebook at Owl Hollow Press, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. See you Thursday.